Hello people and welcome to watch yet another um, World Team Carcassonne Online Championships Scream or Friendly Match. This time we are going to see the, well, the debut friendly match of Latvia. Uh, since they have not, um, at least to my knowledge, played a single one so far. And they are going to be facing Ukraine, so we can be sure that um, um, it's going to be an exciting match. Both players for sure have um, skillful players. Um, Latvia um, does have Krishna in their lineup, as well as only Denver. Um, the, others, the, the other players from Latvia are, I'd say, uh, a bit less known, but um, they might have some earlier experience from uh, competitive Carcassonne, I'm not sure. Um, but then on Ukraine's side we have um, a lot of players who have, at, who have, who I think all have competitive experience um, from Carcassonne. Um, if not from anywhere else, then at least from, from the um, uh, Ukraine Carcassonne Online Championship side. Um, from either the major league or from the lower leagues of that uh, format, or of that um, um, of of the, of the Ukraine system, let's say. So uh, the pairings for today: uh, Napalm I versus Samuelson, Silent Monk versus Pavel Brin, Krishna Tania Yu. Isitsus versus Devaka, Margot Nazario 77, and final pairing only Denver Fan Alexon. And uh, if if um, the chat wants to wants to view a specific match, we are fully on board with it. Um, otherwise, we will just uh, pick uh, whatever I choose then, I guess. So let's... Oh, and by the way, um, I am fully aware that Alexei is streaming the same match at the same time. But I decided that since I already had that uh, match scheduled, then I'm going to do this anyway. And uh, then both the Latvian and the Ukrainian players will get... Um, well, I want to say the pleasure, but uh, also, um, yeah, let, let, let's just say the, say the pleasure of getting two viewpoints from um, both um, Alexei and mine um, to the featured games. Now, I do not know what uh, games Alexei has decided to feature, but uh, if we happen to feature the same games, then, uh, well, more benefits for the ones whose game is picked, I guess. Uh, but um, for the first game, I would like to go with um, Krishna and Tanya, since um, I, I reckon they are the they are the uh, uh, the most known pairing, I guess, um, to say from this uh, lineup. And then um, I also want to see. Um, Let's say like only Denver, Van Alexen, and as well as perhaps like Silent Monk. Um, so hopefully we have uh, opportunities to view to view all of those games. Let's start with uh, with with Krishna. Why am I writing it here? Jesus. And they are about ten tiles deep. So let's roll. Um, both players at four points. Uh, Tanya already having a bit of a tricky situation with her one one point city here. Hoping to try and save it. Not going to happen with this tile. 
uh, like he, uh, she, she could do a semi save, but it would be like kind of bad because the only tile that would then be able to make the complete save is is one of the two remaining starting tiles, and whereas Krishna would have a huge number of tiles to complete the blocks, so it's not worth to use uh, the triple city to here, especially a shielded one. Like now, um, even though Tanya did not get his, uh, did not get her maple blocked, um, she did get uh, a good benefit from that shielded tile, adding two points to her city and claiming the uh, claiming the six point field. Likely going to be a nine point field, maybe. Well, not anymore. Uh, well, it still could be because there are two dividers. Uh, but uh, of course, when Krishna now finishes his own castle, that now it's going to be a nine-point field, and it's going to be a worthwhile to do. Uh, Krishna might grab the road as well. He does, <coughs> because it is the only two-point road available um, on the on the board. And now, I think one of the priorities that Tanya has is to start using tiles that she cannot get like direct points with uh, to here and to here and to limit this square to a road plus city tile so that Krishna cannot grab a divider and separate his four point city from this um, uh, two point ruin and to not get sucked up into this same mess as Krishna has placed Tanya to. Uh, curiously enough, um, Tanya added one point to Krishna's road, which I think is a great move, because now Krishna has two meeples. Um, yeah, two meeples sort of kind of trapped in this uh, square that needs to be uh, filled and because Krishna has a road pointing here now Krishna cannot build a ruin just upwards and block this uh, and block this square because then Krishna obviously will have two meeple stuck whereas Tanya will only have one now um, there is of course the added benefit that uh, uh, Krishna will lead uh, in points with his two features versus one if this square gets blocked but um, I really don't think that Krishna will ever be going for it unless he gets maybe like I don't know a quad city or something and he doesn't have like actually anything else to do with it <clears throat> I think Krishna will definitely be looking to get a triple city with a road over here to get his um, road people back. Uh, meanwhile, Tanya taking a four point loop road, Krishna also, uh, Krishna having uh, four cities open at this point, as he likes to do, um, likes to have multiple cities open uh, so that he can use um, all sorts of city tiles effectively. Very good strategy and very uh, yeah, very good very helpful and very um, vital strategy to use ah that just I'm not sure how I, how I feel about that move like um, the idea here is that because there are only because there is only one uh, dagger tile with the left side curve where which is actually the only dagger tile left in the game because the other three are over here then Krishna wanted to prevent Tanya from getting a four point city and restricting this um, perhaps being an eight point city to the final remaining dagger and I did, it did definitely work out and also worked out like a charm with this one getting the divider but uh, now Krishna has another issue because Tanya started a city here. Now, if Krishna finishes this city, then 
this square is going to be very vulnerable. And um, Well, this uh, sort of kind of works out, I guess, at least momentarily. Um, the idea that Tanya has, I, I think, is that she wants to guide this three-point city to the right and leave a quad city hole that would possibly be uh, tying down two of Krishna's meeples. And then if Tanya wins the 50-50 the coin toss and gets the Quad City, then she would be able to kind of uh, mitigate the uh, issue that she has over here with her blocked one point city, which I think is a, is a very great uh, strategy at this point. Extender going at the at the bottom, which is the only possible move really. Krishna is able to connect to Tanya's um, field, a to two days nine point field. But I'm not sure if this was that vital at the moment, since now Krishna might have to deal with uh, a, with being being. Or like with having quite few meeples in hand, because the only real, the, the only real possibility of getting meeples back is from here with a city cap, which is in a rather in in a rather precarious uh, place. It can be directed, for example, to the left and can be blocked. Does not get blocked, which is of course good for Krishna. Uh, but then, um, in addition to this, she um, he only has. Uh, two tiles going here, which would be worthwhile to use, being the two remaining triple cities with a road. Tanya is able to fulfill her plan and limit Krishna's both cities to the Quad City. Uh, so I guess Krishna's plan with with this meeple um, backfired kind of badly. Although I still don't deny that it was a great effort, but maybe I would have just preferred more just taking four points here or just finishing his uh, his city earlier, because there's always the you know 50-50 that uh, you are actually able to pull the um, the final remaining dagger. Okay, Krishna trying to actually actually finish this uh, this uh, rather large city with a 50/50 chance, or actually less, because you know of course uh, Krishna needs to find a city cap or at least some city tile here to make sure that uh, it does not get blocked from this square. So a lot of vulnerabilities with Krishna's city, and I don't think he's too happy about that. Also, very weird two-point road. Uh, there might not have been a road monastery at the time when Krishna took this road. I assume not, because um, I don't think at in, in any possible scenario Krishna would be taking a two-point road if he's going to be left with one meeple in this exact situation where he can't really get meeples back in all likelihood. Now Krishna just adding a divider to a rather empty spot so that he is able to take advantage of both city caps with a field and both city caps with a road because he only has one meeple he can't really invest it anywhere and that is of course the um, the difficult situation every time that uh, you are left without meeples Tanya 
grabs the field back, a 12 point field now extended by three points um, as, a, as a result of uh, Krishna's um, as a result of Krishna's attack and this curve. Sanya grabbing a six point field, I think rather pretty much surely. I think it would have been much better for her to just uh, try and block this square because I don't think Krishna would have taken the six point field even if he uh, yeah, completes the road like he did. I don't think he would do that with like a bit less than 20 tiles remaining. Chris and I gonna go over here, gonna just take a meeple back. I mean, it's not gonna be, it, it's, only gonna, it's only going to be one point like directly, but uh, it is way better than uh, getting just two points and no meeple back. And because Tanya has only one meeple, I don't think Krishna is going to be afraid of Tanya attacking this uh, shared city in the future. He is thinking awfully long about this about this move. Okay, let's do a little point counting. He does it, he does do the thing I said eventually. Um, so plus 12 for Krishna even. Um, um, it's gonna be uh, gonna get down to zero with this 12 point field. Minus 1, minus 7, minus 13, minus 15, um, minus 10 and Krishna is two meeples ahead. I think it's still a rather good situation to be honest because at any point Krishna can just invest uh, one of one of his meeples to attack this field or to attack this field and just score uh, score the field points and still be ahead in meeples and be behind only by like four points or maybe even on on the, on the plus side if he is able to um, bring a second maple to the western field. Now I think Krishna should just take two points pretty much anywhere. Um, if there is the dagger is still remaining. One, two, three, four, five. There is the dagger still remaining, uh, which would bring seven points to Tanya. Um, but uh, so there is no connection spot from here. There are also no city caps except for the starting tile that go here and can. Um, can score the points. Okay, Krishna does go for the field. How many tiles does he does he exactly have to connect? Well, minus this now. It is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There is only one regular curve remaining. Um, in all honesty, I'm not sure if this was the exact tile to do it. Although I might be a little bit biased because you know I because I can say that Tanya immediately got one of the two tiles that Krishna needed. Um, I mean the best move for Tanya honestly maybe just take two points. You could extend the field, but then Krishna will have another opportunity to come to the field either via a starting tile or from here somehow, which just wouldn't be great. Now the question is, will Tanya just uh, have faith 
that she will get the final remaining regular curve or will she start blocking? Because I I don't I honestly don't think it's gonna be worthwhile for Tanya to not do anything to this. I mean 50-50 is you know somewhat a lot and uh, Krishna now does kind of need this field because if he if he doesn't get it he only has one maple extra and um, he's behind like 10 points or so and with only one meeple, it's now going to be significantly harder to actually muster up those uh, those eight or ten points. And uh, Krishna might indeed not be able to do it unless he gets the final remaining regular curve. Yeah, perhaps just take in two points or go over here. Those are pretty much the options. Takes two points. Krishna with a straight road. Maybe going over here and trying to restrict this square so that uh, Tanya will not be able to. Uh, find any any suitable tiles, or it's going to be at least uh, uh, at least severely more difficult to find a tile to this square and start blocking um, Krishna's connection. Krishna instead going for the four points. And I do think that is possibly even a better move than this. I think he might have to start finding an alternative option to win this game other than the field. And this might be one thing to do it. Krishna does not get a saving tile, but gets a semi-saving tile. Now... Is it going to be good enough? The good thing here is that uh, even if Tanya manages to block this square, she might be creating another attacking spot to the field from here. Krishna now has to think how many blocking tiles there are, which Tanya could use, and so to which direction should uh, should Krishna go, or whether he's just gonna ignore this spot completely and just maybe start a new a new eight point city could be possible. Also, since there is this dagger still remaining. There is the possibility to come to come from the to to, um, to come to the field from here and through through here by placing the, the, the dagger here. That's gonna be a 50-50 shot which actually Tanya might actually use that on the on the final tiles. Like if if it happens so that the final two remaining tiles will be the, reg the regular curve and the um, the dagger, then Tanya's gonna go over here, drop a farmer. Then Krishna will draw the curve, go over here, and then Tanya will draw the dagger and 
join the farm with a third meeple. Totally possible. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There is also. Oh no, there is not. No, no crossroads remaining, so this meeple is blocked. Okay, plus six. Plus six. Interesting. Plus six, plus eight, plus nine, thirteen. 12, 6, even. Minus 12 for Krishna. Needs this field. Or might have needed this um, city. But now that I think about it, because Tanya has not done anything to this city, is it possible that the Quad City has been discarded, like at the early stages of the game? Because I find it really, really weird that the Nido player has not done anything to this square. The Quad City might be discarded. Which would mean that Krishna cannot rely on... Uh, Uh, yeah, cannot rely on um, completing this city either, so that will not be the saving grace. Tanya might maybe go here and drop a farmer, or just four points. No, but actually, because Tanya will be, ex they will be exactly equal. Uh, if Krishna gets to the field, so now Tanya is plus six, gets a great use out of the Quad City tile now if it is remaining. And as far as I know, the remaining tiles now are going to be the Quad City, the regular, um, the regular curve, and this dagger, which like I said, this option could be used for a field connection. Tanya gets the dagger. Krishna gets the curve, gets the plus twelve just gets the plus twelve, but it's not gonna be enough anymore. And the Quad City was indeed discarded at the start of the game. Unlike uh, um yeah, um Contrary to my knowledge, which is um, why this was like made in the first place with, with like such a passion, I guess. Um, yeah, yeah. If I if I knew that the that quad city would be gone, then I definitely would have liked uh, would would have liked this move even even better. Than I did. Still a good move, even if the Quad City was left, but uh, without it, uh, it's just. It was just yell yelling a disaster to happen for Krishna. One O for the Ukraine for the match and in this particular match. Now, since there are not any uh, any requests for a certain match, then how about we take a look at only Denver? How is he doing? Still at his first game. Uh, 
uh, exactly zero tiles, rem zero tiles remaining. So let's let's actually also continue possibly with only Denver and uh, and Van Alexen's match with their second game. Um, who's controlling the field? It's Green's field, but Red has a nine point counter field, which is mitigated by this another green field. Looks like it's the fields are gonna be enough for only Denver to take this down. So 1-0 to Latvia. And we shall watch their second game. First four points advantage goes to only Denver. Green top move, I think, would be just taking a loop road. Like you could be very greedy and going gonna go for this, but it's really difficult to really complete without your opponents attacking to it. So I think this is way better. Less risk, uh, quicker completion. And all is good. By starting another city on this field, um, as soon as, uh, as as soon as Green gets this uh, road completed, I think he might as well drop a field meeple. Six points and room to grow, so. There is potential. Unfortunately for Red, he is not able to use the Triple City as a quick point tile. Instead has to extend his city. Wonderful sequence for for green, able to complete the road, indirectly continue the castle, drop a farmer, and then on the very next move, just bam, get a get a ten point castle finished, and life's good. Six point field, and uh, some green squares here and here and here. Then maybe even a road monastery here. Then expand the field even more. You know, the possibilities are big. Okay, interesting decision by by Red here. Um, threatening to complete a 10-point city, but at the same time also making himself need so only like only stick caps to like for his uh, for both of his cities i mean i don't like this man like, i would just rather take the four points here just get rid of this uh, this empty city cap make sure that your opponent cannot benefit from it As Green now does, is now able to benefit from this um, four-point city because Denver made the decision to complete his um, own city and to drop a farmer instead. I mean, rushing to this field, which was actually at the moment only like three points, because oh, and that was because only Denver made the made the city, but uh, uh, like. This field 
was never gonna be like that secure at any point because as soon as this city gets completed it's going to offer a um, chance for the other player to attack the field it's also looking like this um, this field that was looking kind of lucrative I would say even is threatening to be to or oh, to, to remain very small but it doesn't matter now because red already used a meeple to attack it and so far I would say that uh, green is in a wonderful position uh, controlling actually both fields at the moment but uh, let's assume that this is going to be shared and this might even fall to red still 15 points ahead on the scoreboard and with three additional meeples so i think life is good for crane at the moment then we're making a bit of a feisty and risky move uh, trying to complete a six point loop instead of just continuing his road by one point and trying to find a road end. Since now with the meeple advantage that Green has, Green is now able to take this three point road and just, uh, um, just negate this uh, loop road entirely. And when you are up in points then if you just start negating everything like every feature that you, every feature that your opponent has you are likely going to be just fine green going to be i think just taking this meeple back oh what oh no 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 i i don't like this at all um well, first of all, because there is only one of these daggers remaining that fits here and Green City can be directed uh, upwards and can be possibly blocked completely. And I mean, this is just using a valuable city cap, which could have given you a meeple back. As I said, now it's going to be now, now the now, now the wheels are turning. And uh, I mean, if you ask me, Green's position just got a lot worse by just like two or three moves. A whole lot worse. Because they, because they used a valuable city cap to a shared feature to drop a farmer. When there's going to be a lot of possibilities to drop a farmer later like for example if red wants to ever see this finished um, then this is going to offer a, a attacking spot to the field from here or then if you're green you can just use like any other city tile over here and drop a farmer on that instead of just using a very a, a very valuable city cap like now green might be but yeah yeah green green might now end up being in a, a green might now end up having a zero point farmer because uh, it's gonna be a 50 50 shot of getting this uh, um, this this road monastery to bring uh, to bring green second people to the to the farm and green now also completed his monastery but he actually yeah there was no divider left which makes this move even even worse because there was gonna be no possibility of getting 
of getting uh, this meeple back with a divider and preventing like stuff like this that only Denver th that um, only Denver does. So if Green manages to lose this position, like given the given the advantage that he had, I would definitely highlight this move as the worst or the, like or like the, the the biggest reason why the position just uh, deteriorated. Green is trying to build a backdoor option to have at least some value for the farmer, but I think if only Denver just goes here and blocks, yes, he does. He does exactly that. Oh, and also drops a farmer. Very interesting. So now it doesn't matter uh, which player gets the. Uh, um, the the road monastery. Oh well, it, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter um, that much that uh, uh, Red will get the meeple back and will be able to get another um, eight points at least. But uh, regarding the field, it's not going to make a difference. However, Green does find another attacking opportunity to the field and. Uh, Okay, let's see. Let's have a quick break. So, 16 points ahead. Uh, even. Field is even. Field is even. 21 points. 13 points. Okay, so Green is still in a really good position. At least as long as he can avoid red pulling this... Um, this uh, road monastery and getting immediate nine points plus perhaps a meeple back immediately. Also nine points for the player who manages to grab a triangle if there are any remaining. One, two, three, Still two triangles, so nine points for the player who manages to, to grab the triangle first. Green does have his city now blocked completely. And the situation is looking like there's going to be no really like no possible win routes for red if they don't manage to get the road monastery although they, they did now get seven points four points to the uh, uh, four points for the city and three for the field and they might end up having a small private field but no no but actually because it's it's in both players interest to place the road monastery here. And I definitely think that both players will do it. Green likely gonna be taking the nine points over here. They do. There is an attacking opportunity to the field from here via a curve or the road monastery, or maybe a straight road. So the player who gets a road tile first is going to be taking this opportunity, I reckon, especially red, because red has two meeples, green only has one. Uh, three, four, five, six, three regular curves left so making this move will be very 
lucrative potentially for the player who finds the road tile first. Gonna have splendid chances to get to the field and overrun it. Could be done like this also. A totally legit move. I think green has to go here. And green might even have to drop a, a farmer of his own after Denver defense. Oh, but is Denver actually going to drop another farmer? I don't think he can do that because he needs the he needs to keep the meeple um, if he manages to get the road monastery. But green will absolutely drop a farmer here because there are still three regular curves remaining and it's just gonna be too big of a chance that uh, uh, red gets at least one of them and green cannot risk this field which is now 18 points worth now if I'm red you know, I go here or here, because you need to stop green from having from having any ideas with going with like uh, grabbing all the remaining three curves and connect connecting to the field from here. So it's going to be a key to prevent that idea. Um, one. Two. Ah, but there is still one one dagger remaining also, but I okay, well, I mean, you know, three regular curves, so uh, red does have good chances to, to have at least one of those. But still I think the move would be to just go here or to here to to try and uh, prevent the chances of green getting all three regular curves and making the connection that way. Okay, does not matter. And green gets the road monastery, but cannot get points from it. So what's he gonna do? Is he gonna try just to block a field connection opportunity from, from like here? Maybe. Or from here through a curve? All depends on what tiles exactly are remaining. There's gonna be um, one regular curve and um, one, one, uh, one dagger. But the other tiles I do not know. No monasteries. No triple cities. K blocks the connection from here. Denver will not be able to try and connect through a curve from here. Four, five, six, seven. One crossroad still remaining. I think Denver will just take seven points. I don't think there is much else he can do. But if he doesn't, then if he finds something better, I at least I can't see any anything better. The point counts plus ten for green. Uh, field is even. Plus seventeen. Plus 26, plus 18. 
So after this, Denver would still be at minus 11, which is a lot. And has no other features that can get him the remaining 11 points except for the field. Green gets the final remaining crossroad. Might block this. If there is a straight road remaining, I think he should. Four, five, six, seven. There is a straight road remaining, so I think I think the move is over here. But will Will Green see it? Will Green see that there is one one straight road and one regular curve remaining? Because that's going to be the only possible scenario where where Red will win this game. If Red first gets the final remaining um, straight road and final and then the final remaining regular curve and connects to the field worth 18 points. If Green finds this move, he will win the game. He does not find the move! And now this is gonna come to a reality and... Oh, Green gets the curve. But is there, a, is there another curve? Um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Okay, there was no other curves. But actually, there was still a starting tile as well, which also um, could uh, could do the exact same trick for for red, going over here and placing a and placing a farmer. Green did not find this move, which would guarantee him the win, and therefore still um, st still gave red a, a possibility to win the game. Tremendous stuff. Somewhat of a tight game until the end, since uh, Red did have the possibility to come back. And now it's gonna go down to a decider between these two. Oof. Okay, but let's see who are we gonna take a look at next. Okay, let's go for Silent Monk. Since I still do not see any recommendations in the chat, so I assume I have free hands. Oh, has he already lost? Ah. Okay, that's gonna be the first match uh, match point for Ukraine zero two and then let's see about Okay, let's let's take a look at uh, Napalm I. He's now playing a decider versus Samuelson. 15 minutes into the game. Okay, let's take a look at this. Let's also take a look at uh, at, at the ratings of the players, since uh, it does seem that Latvia is going to have a, um, a somewhat of a stacked team, um, at least in at least regard um, at least regarding the um, ELO points. Seems like they're going to have a quite a many experts in their lineup, 
assuming that all of these players that are playing that are playing today are going to be in the final lineup i um, are going to be in the final roster i am not sure Samuelson four points ahead. Um, Napalm does have a huge ruin worth five, seven, ten points. So plus six for blue, plus 12, 13, 16, 23, 26, 25. Um, 18, 6, 7, plus 2 for red and 2 meebles ahead. It's, it's not looking too great for, for blue here. Uh, he's gonna have to attack the fields, so I think well I think Samuelson is actually gonna go here with a farmer. Yes he does to secure the fields. And Napalm might not have too much to be done. Well actually, you know what? Actually he does. I think Napalm could go here, prepare a nine point monastery spot, and then just connect um, all the fields together that that red has excellent move I think it's gonna create a winning chance for um, for blue but does it need to do something else is there a starting tile remaining one two three four unfortunately not so these two meeples are trapped But now Samuelson, uh, he's not going to bother connecting these two fields because whoever gets a regular regular monastery will go here because there are two remaining. So you gotta go here to prevent your opponent getting the second monastery and going there instead. Just taking one point, uh, Napalm. Probably just gonna take one point as well. Has to have the meeple in hand uh, for the monastery. He he ca he can't use this meeple. Cannot use this meeple. Which also uh, plays well for for red. Ah, red gets the monastery, and I think that that is it. Okay, let's just do a quick point count again. So plus 13, uh, 17, 21, 22, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So 42, 39, 38, 31, 24, 20, plus 12 for red and plus one meeple. So I think there is not gonna be a comeback for Napalm anymore at this situation. Red might be free to do whatever he wants. Was he? Would it actually be possible to complete city? I mean, Samuelson's move does certainly hint that way. One, two, three, four. So there was a triangle still remaining. But okay, now I want to say that there is no coming back for blue. Cannot actually continue any of his features 
except for this, but it doesn't really count because uh, it also continues Samuelson's ruin. So blue is now at minus 11 and you know honestly I I have no idea what uh, what blue can do if anything I don't no honestly I I don't think he can do anything Yeah just uh, preparing quick point spots but Samuelson just uh, collecting the taxes the best blue can do try to make this happen if there are well I, I actually believe there are city caps still remaining three four five six seven eight eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen nineteen twenty 21, 22, okay, one city cap remaining, so I mean, could I have maybe honestly just left it with no meeple? Yeah, I mean, it doesn't really matter because he, because he had to take like risks, whatever he does, but. Sort of a landslide win for red, and it's gonna be 2 1 in favor of Samuelson. Plus two, minus five, minus eight, and then all other features on the board. Yeah, this is just just a landslide to win. Twenty-one point field, and Samuelson gonna bring the second point for uh, for Ukraine let's double check that it was indeed two and one uh, yes it was so let's do napalm I one, two, and another point for Ukraine, and then Margot Nasario. Let's check on them. Has stopped playing. Ah, there is a point for Latvia to be seen. Okay, that's feisty. Adds tension. A clean 2 0 win for Margot. Is it sus? Versus Devaka having a decider. Okay, six tiles remaining. Quick checks on the board. Uh, plus six for Devaka. Plus eight 
plus 7 for the monasteries, plus 11, um, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. A lot of fields. 6, 9, 19, uh, 10, 16, 10, uh, plus 10 for red, plus 6, plus 6 for red, with a quick look. Okay. Uh, but red is in one monumental disadvantage, so maybe there is something that uh, green can indeed do. Uh, likely going to relate to these fields, but it also needs to be aware of this possibility exactly um, of Devaka being may maybe able to join to this field and gain nine point uh, again sorry three more points. Is there a tile here? Um, one, two, three. Oh, there are two even two. Uh, regular Doritos, so uh, field triangles, and no dividers, one, two, three, four, and one vanilla city cap. Wow, so three tiles over here, that's gonna be... And the Vaka doesn't draw it! So, I mean, three tiles and I mean four tiles after this remaining, so big chances that Esetus has one of those tiles in hand. Gonna be able to make maybe 16 points, uh, no, so 15 points. Okay, does get a, a, um, a triangle, so nine points, which might actually put him in the lead. Devaka. Mm, I think he yeah, has to go here. Is it so swift? Another field triangle. Gonna take four points over here, and then Devaka will be having the. Oh no, actually. Is it so gonna take this city, I think, for two points? Because otherwise, Devaka will complete this city with the final remaining vanilla city cap, make seven point move. And so if if Esetus now takes this, it's going to be two points uh, versus four, but it's going to be a net minus one. Whereas if he takes this, it's going to be ah, there was it. There was a better one. Good I did not see the six point field. This is definitely the way to go. Only a net one. Uh, sorry, only a net minus one. A very good spot. Um, yeah, very, very good spot from uh, from Esetsus. But I don't think this, this the plus seven was enough for red, was it? Because despite all the fields, green might not have enough. What does he have? It's plus six. It's plus six. It's plus plus nine. And plus nine. Is it a tie? Oh, what a way to win for Esetsus. As it is a tie, and um, with the VTCOC format, I believe um, the the starting play rule is in play, and that means that because Devaka made the the, la the final move, I also assume that it was uh, Devaka who won. Uh, uh, it was Devaka who started, and therefore he is the starting player and loses the game. 
Interesting, interesting. Okay, so a point for Latvia. Mm, here. And is it so two? De Waka one. And Latvia evens the score to two to two. That is a tongue twisted. Two, 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 two. Tell that to a foreigner, and I, I guarantee you he is not going to have any idea what you're talking about. Um, okay, what's the what's the situation between only Denver is playing at the moment um, in a decider? Let's take a look at that. 18 tiles. Okay, no pressure for either player. It is only a 2-2 score and your game might decide who wins. So, plus seven. A bunch of farmers. The red seems to be getting the better of it. Um, okay, so uh, plus seven, plus nine, then uh, plus seventeen, plus fourteen, plus twenty six, uh, twenty. 17 plus 23 for red. Okay. Now, does green have the road monastery left? Yes, it is left. Okay. So there might still be. There is actually still room for surprises. No starting tiles. Uh, which means that if Green gets the Road Monastery, he might and actually will go to the lead. And that's likely going to be the game deciding tile. Um, Which, honestly, if I'm red, I might be enticed to maybe go here and create another spot for a road monastery. Okay, does decide against it. Well, there is a good side that uh, even if green gets the road monastery, then at least red has one meeple more, so... Maybe it's possible to play with it, but only maybe. There are no extenders in the game, so green will not be able to connect to this ruin. Plus seven, nineteen, twenty-seven, twenty. 1, 16, 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So if green gets the monastery, they'll be plus 11. Whew, okay. I mean... The goal of both of both players at this point is to just be the one who gets the road monastery. 
And it is Red who gets it. Um, is that it? Is there any possible way for Green to come back? I I don't think so. I think Red will just go over here and score eight points, five for the monastery and three for taking this uh, castle away from uh, being double scored by Green. Oh wait, there is a dagger, which goes over here, and which can get green to the field, but is it going to be enough? Yeah, I don't think it is, but uh, green is for sure going to go for it, There's, there is nothing that can get green more points than 15. What? What's he doing? What? What's the game plan here? I... I don't know. One... Two... Like, surely you gotta go for the dagger. Well, maybe first try to get three points, but on the next turn you are forced to go with the dagger and well red gets the dagger the dagger anyway, so well it doesn't not does not seem to matter. Yeah this is gonna be a win for red for sure. Red gonna score four points. Oh my bad, only one point for this city because it is on Green's field. One, two, uh, goes for the field. If there are curves, it's gonna be fine. So four, five, six, seven, still two curves. So. Uh, yeah, Red is forced to get at least one of them, so he will be able to join this nine point farm and get even more points. Okay, Denver has a curve, and also Red has a curve in hand going here. Plus six. And this might also be a, a landslide win because you know red has two fields which are worth uh, 27 points in total. Seems like quite the landslide to me. Plus 22. Plus 37. And then with this plus 31, so over a 30 point to win. I call that a landslide. And a point to Ukraine. So. Here and then one and two and points. Oh, not not twenty three. Oh God. Uh, but and then let's find out if Krishna has finished. Nope. We are still gonna be watching Krishna. Um, in a decider of theirs. Okay. 2-3 for, for Ukraine at the moment. And a 4 tiles until the end of the match. Oh. 
Also, hello, Vasimir and Ivan. Nice to see movement in the chat. Krishna seems to control a very large ruin. Also, ahead 10 points in, on the scoreboard. Um, okay, so 14, 21. Um, nine point field for yellow, so 12, 8, um, 9, 5, plus 1. Minus one, two, six, eight, ten, twelve, a plus eight for Krishna, roughly, or not even that roughly, if I hopefully count it right. A plus eight, plus nine for Krishna, and Tanya able to take. Uh, Three points, I think. Go over here and on the field. Yeah, that's about it. Or over here and on the field, but it doesn't matter, it's the same amount of points, anyways. Uh, which looks like that it's gonna be a 3-3 match score and we're gonna have to take a look at the games won and seeing that there were so many deciders is there a chance that the games are even tied? Oh that would be that would be something else uh, because I actually don't know what the second tiebreaker would be then or at least it doesn't come straight to my head now what could it uh, wait no there, there definitely was a, a at least second and I think a third tiebreaker as well first was the matches one then was the uh, um, the games won, and I'm gonna have to have to check during the stream. Um, okay, but uh, the thing is that yes, Krishna has taken the points two, three, and three, and so let's see. Krishna versus Tanya 1 and 3-3 three, three score and then 0-1-5-6-7-8 um, game wins for Latvia versus 4-5-6-7-8 game wins for Ukraine uh. So what's the tiebreaker? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Um, okay, we're gonna have to do some checking. So we're gonna keep the stream on for now. Uh, for now, uh, because I am really curious. Because uh, with these rules, who actually wins? Hmm. Page is not loading. Okay, let's see. Okay, here and we are gonna have have a little PDF session. Uh, requirements, tournament schedule, tournament format, match format, game format, tournament standings. Um, each field is worth three points. Drink of group phase, clock rules. 
round where the team is eliminated percentage of matches won of duels won of games won uh are there are there tiebreaker rules someone in the chat let me know are there tiebreaker rules and where can I actually find them? Because I not sure. I'm not sure if there are for like a single match. There's gonna be tiebreaker rules for the group phase when it's like uh, when, when it has finished, but uh, the rules don't seem to have a a tiebreaker rules for a single match. Uh, oh wait, okay, let's maybe here, uh, the number of matches won uh, versus match points, number of duels, difference between the number of games, oh no, that's the same thing. The same criteria will be applied using the only confrontations between the tied teams. Uh, no, still no help. Um, a little help. A little help from the chat. <laughs> help the poor streamer in need. Uh, this is supposed to be a Carcassonne stream, not 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 a not reading the PDF rules of of the VTCOC. Match two players. Each match initiator. Uh, I honestly, I do not know. Uh, I will, I will call it a tie. And I will find out later how the ruling actually goes, because I'm pretty sure that there must be... Oh, actually, no, 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 in this format it doesn't... They don't have the tiebreaker rules because they don't need them. Because it doesn't matter uh, really, like, who... Oh, yeah, yeah, because, of course, they don't have the tiebreaker rules because there's not going to be a, a, a six versus six match ever. I wonder why they are not why why there are not tiebreaker rules because this situation is not is not freaking possible. <laughs> okay, never mind. Uh, forget everything that I just said. Uh, I I was going on uh, way beyond my. Uh, my um <clears throat> should should be expertise level so okay we're gonna we're gonna call it a tie for this match and we are going to um guide you to the next match that is about to take place and that uh yeah it's Gonna start, I think, at any second now, and it's gonna be. Uh, where is it? Okay, uh, Spain, Catalonia uh, is gonna start at 20 to 30 finish time, so in just four minutes, and that will be um, streamed by Alexei, as well as as you already know, since Alexei is also or has also streamed this Latvia-Ukraine match, so I will leave you to um, Alexei's uh, friendly company, where I will also be heading, because I want to see this Spain-Catalonia match. Tomorrow there's going to be a an another Ukraine match, it's going to be Ukraine-Spain, and I will stream that, it is, uh, it's going to start at 19 UTC, and later on this week, 
probably also gonna be streaming other matches from this as well, maybe even all. Uh, but uh, if if um, Alexei decides to put in a reservation uh, before me, then I will not be streaming those matches. But um, for the time being, I see that these are all gonna be free lutations, and you you will probably most likely see me uh, later on this week streaming those matches. Anyways, that's about that's uh, enough me mumbling jumbling. Uh, congratulations to both Latvia and Ukraine. Splendid stuff and uh, splendid stuff from uh, from the games, from the matches, from all the players. Uh, I will see you again with some more Carcassonne content, and it's gonna be bye for now.